Gotta love Connecticut hockey had the chance to sit down with Steve Valaquette, former New York Rangers goalie and now owner of hockey stats company Clear Sight Analytics. Steve shared with us how data analytics can change how coaches and players approach the game of hockey. How was that feeling for you when you finally made it to the NHL and you made your first goalie save? When you make a big save in a hockey game and it's at a big moment, you can mm -hmm. hear the crowd, you really feel like a, a shiver of sensation go up your spine and sort of exit your head and then it comes back in and then you get a buzz in your body. A lot of us don't want to retire because of that. So really what I want to talk to you today is about your career after your pro days. Yeah. So you work specifically in hockey analytics right now. So take me through a little bit. Three years ago you started looking at NHL goals. What drew you to it and why? I was a backup goaltender in the NHL. I don't think there was anybody in the building more focused than me watching the game Absolutely. because I can get thrown in at any moment. A lot of my Focus at that time was on shot selection, mm -hmm. shot quality, offense, scoring chances, what our goaltender Henrik Lundqvist was seeing each mm -hmm. night. These curiosities that I had as a player has really driven me to the project that we're on right now, which is solving shot quality. Everything on the project started in net. It started with the goalie. Um, it's actually the position in our sport that nobody understands. And I think that's where this project uh, really serves a really good platform for coaches. The information that we do have is one season of U16, two years at Quinnipiac for their full data set. We also have last year's NHL set, which is 80,000 shots, and then we're already at, into where we are at this season. The more data that we're able to get, the more information we can help coaches with with uh, practice planning. If I'm a coach, I want to know where my players should be shooting from in practice. Yes. It's going to happen most often in games. Everybody shoots from the middle of the ice. And what I know about that is that the shot from the middle of the ice where a player comes over the blue line, unimpeded, nobody around, takes a clear shot on the goalie, it only happens once every two games. But 65% of the shots happen in the funnel to the side and off the wings. So if the shooting drills aren't game-like, and if the play after the shot where you allow the goalie to play the rebound and play the sequence out is not there, and we don't understand why it needs to be there, then your players aren't getting developed either. They're not shooting against an engaged goaltender. Specifically, what are you really looking at and breaking down to help these youth players, to help the NHL, to help parents, coaches understand better what their players can do to be even better and to change the game? Fundamentally in hockey, nobody knows where the scoring chance is because nobody's ever gone through all of the shots, watched them, every shot in our database has video attached to it, so we know what happened before the shot, meaning the pass that happens before the shot is taken. So we have that location identified, the shot itself, where it goes on the gold sender, and then where it goes afterwards. Does it go to the corner? Does it go over the glass? Is the puck frozen? Uh, is there a rebound that goes to the strong side of the ice or the weak side of the ice? Is there a shot that comes off that rebound? All of these data points now give us a big picture, which is shot quality, and we know um, what a quality scoring chance is now. What I want to come out of it, if, if it was a dream setup, would be that starting from my position that I love, we replace safe percentage with a goalie rating, and that was my focus initially. Mm -hmm. One step further, the shots on goal clock should really tell a different story than just total shots on goal. Mm -hmm. I would like it to say 40 shots against Roberto Luongo, and this many at the top were high percentage shots, this many were medium, and this many were low. Because most nights in the NHL on a 40 shot night, you're gonna have about 25 to 30 low percentage shots. Mm -hmm. Again, for coaches, when you understand it, you will absolutely know what a bad goal is. Yes. You have clear expectations for your goalie. For player development, I know that a pass from one side of the ice to the other goes in one every three times. Yes. So when you set up a drill for your developing goalie, your shooters, how they defend, if you're giving up more than one every three, We've got to tail the drill back a little bit mm -hmm. and let's start that progression a little easier, widen out the players, get that magic number again to the sweet spot where the athletes are engaged in practice. When you look at the U16, the NHL level, even the youth level, what are you finding from your analysis? It's amazing how consistent it is. All of the numbers that I have in the NHL, the same thing at the U16 level, breakaways go in one every four times. And I had to sit back and look at it because the numbers were the same at college and they were also the same in the AHL and they are also the same in the NHL. Why is a breakaway going one every four times? And what we're doing is really identifying 
all of these scoring opportunities and for once giving fundamental value for everybody in the game to understand it better. I think a big takeaway for youth hockey coaches is going to be this very significant line that I'm about to draw on the dry erase board. Here it is, the most important line on the ice. It divides the ice in two parts and it runs across the top of the circle. This line right here is called the slot line. It's significant, first of all, from the defensive side of the puck where a defenseman will know that the mindset has to be on any odd man rush, of course at five on five, the player carrying the puck cannot cross this line and shoot. A player cannot come across this area right here and pass to another player across the line and shoot because the shot now will be a high percentage play and we want to stay away from that. We want to allow our goaltender to see the puck off of the shot, which would be player coming in on an odd man rush, goaltender being able to stay out on angle, and the shot now that the goalie can see for more than half of a second before the puck comes off the shooter's stick is what we qualify as a clear-sighted shot. Now, over all of the sample sizes we've used from youth hockey, college to pro, a clear-sighted shot goes in the back of the net one every 31 shots, if we have all situations included. But if that pass is made across the line here, or the player carries it across the line, those shots are going into the back of the net one every three times. So it's that significant of a start Offensively, you will know how to expose that line and cross it as much as possible. And for your goaltender, you'll now have a clear expectation of what you want from him, stopping the shots that he can see. If a player is right here and a second player is here and the pass comes across the slot line up above the top of the circle, that is now a low percentage shot. It's a clear sighted shot because the goaltender has had so much time to advance forward, get angle, depth, squareness, and get set on that shot early, that any play that happens above the top of the circle, even if a pass starts it, is a low percentage shot. One thing I definitely want to know if I'm a youth hockey coach is where the funnel exists. Now the reason why the funnel is very significant is because 65% of all shots in a hockey game, clear sighted shots, are going to come from there, not in the slot. When I go to youth hockey practices, too many shots are coming from here and they're only going to happen once every two games where a player skates in unimpeded and shoots a clear sighted shot on your goaltender. The plays coming here are going to happen so often that your goaltender needs to see more repetitions from there. Your shooters need to know how to shoot but not really score from there because they don't go in the back of the net often enough. The real significant thing for me here is that players getting into the funnel know how to create scoring opportunities where players that are driving the back post now have the rebound that comes off of the goaltender's pad. The reason why we call it a funnel is because the goalie's pad is angled in such a way that when the shot comes from right here, it will hit the back side or the weak side of the post. So the back side pressure here, your attacking player has the opportunity to score a rebound goal. We've got to get more shots in practice from there. It's going to help your goaltender stay more engaged in practice. It's going to help your shooters shooting against a more engaged goaltender so they're going to improve. And that's how you're going to get everybody on the same page and enjoying practice a little bit more. What about youth coaches? What, at what level should they really begin looking at analysis to help their players? Right away. Well, if I'm a youth hockey coach, and I have a parent that's very interested in knowing, yes. then I would have them take these data points down themselves. It's very easy to do. How do you see all of your hockey data analysis really changing how this game is shaped and how it's played? I think just knowing what it is because I feel like we are all chasing rabbits when it comes to understanding this game. For instance, on a two-on-one, I know that the puck carrier, when he skates down the ice, if he shoots it, he's going to score one every seven times, right? But if he passes the puck across to the other player and he shoots it, the puck goes in the back of the net one every 2.8 times. So passing it is much better than shooting. If the player doesn't shoot the puck on that two-on-one, and he passes it, and the puck doesn't lay flat, and the shot doesn't come to the net, and that player skates to the bench. The coach is gonna be all over him, shoot the puck. That's where we're at in our right. sport. There's double standards like that everywhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sitting down Thank to talk to us just about your career and about this amazing new part of your career with hockey data analysis really changing the game. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it.